Hey, my name is Rachel, and today I'll be talking about joint work with Yao Tam and Kalai and Vinod Vaikuntha Nathan called Somewhere Statistical Soundness, Close Quantum Security, and SNARKs. So today I'll start by talking about the last of these three things. A SNARK is a succinct non-interactive argument. Um, the idea is that a prover wants to prove to a verifier that some statement X is in a language. Um, she's gonna do this. Um, so they're gonna both parties are gonna have this common random string that is generated by the third trusted party, um, and they both know it. The prover will generate the certificate pi in response to the common random string, um, and the verifier upon receiving pi and x will verify them jointly with the common random string. Um, there's a few additional properties we're gonna want. Uh, the first is succinctness, which is that if a language takes time t to compute, then verifying it should take time way less than t. Um, the second property is soundness, which is that um, for any poly t size chain prover, um, they shouldn't be able to generate both x and the proof pi um, so that the verifier would accept if x is not actually in the language. So they shouldn't be able to convince the verifier of any false statement. There's been a lot of work on trying to construct SNARDs. Um, so for a long time, all the efforts were directed at constructing SNARDs for MP. Um, and this is only done under really strong assumptions, such as the random oracle model or knowledge assumptions. Um, more recently, there's been effort dedicated towards constructing SNARKs for deterministic languages. Um, so for P, um, it was constructed under sub-exponential IO um, or under this assumption on bilinear groups. Um, recently, a, SNAR um, a work constructed SNARKs for binary dips computations based on sub-exponential OWE. We also want to mention a concurrent work um, by Chaturi Jade and Jin which constructs not a batch MP and P, um, which does it under OWE. So in our work today, we're going to investigate this um, connection between snarks for batch MP and P. So in particular, we're going to show that there's a snark for P, or more generally, any language that has a computation of a non-signaling PCP, um, assuming that there's a snark for batch MP. Um, I just wanted to mention that the set of languages that have computation of non-signaling PCPs includes P, but also classes such as batch NP, which we didn't list here, but um, because we're assuming it, and but also this class NTISP, which is a which is a subclass of NP um, that consists of all non-deterministic computations done in time t and space s. Um, and we will also talk about some more statistical soundness and post-quantum soundness, but we won't get to that yet. So first we'll start out by this connection between SNARKs for languages as computation non signaling PCPs from SNARKs for batch MP. So to just to start, um, let's talk about instead of publicly verifiable SNARKs, which we want to get, we'll talk about existing work on privately verifiable SNARKs. Um, so the works of Kalai, Roz, and Ross Bloom and Brykarski, Holmgren, and Kalai show that there exists a privately verifiable SNARK for any language that has a computation on non signaling PCP. Um, assuming FHE or the consensus of a peer scheme. And once again, um, like the set of languages that have computer non signaling PCPs include P, Bash, and P, and TISP. So let me tell you how this privately verifiable snark works. Um, so we have a prover and a verifier. Um, the verifier is going to compute a set of PCP queries along with a set of public and secret keys um, for, for the FHE scheme. So one for each of the query locations. Um, they're going to send encryptions of um, each of the query locations under this like FHE scheme. So Q1 is um, the encryption of, sorry, Q1 hat is the encryption of Q1 with the public key PK1 and so on. Um, and the verifier is also gonna keep in his head this trap door, which is because of all the secret keys. Um, the prover is going to um, compute the PCP pi and then send back um, the encryptions of the answers at the location Q1 to QL, which they are able to compute under the hood. So they're able to take these encrypted queries um, and compute these encrypted answers. Um, the verifier then takes the trapdoor, which you know he has kept a secret in his brain, um, and will invert the encrypted answers um, and then check the resulting plain text answers. Um, so this is known as a BMW heuristic. Um, and 
So the question of whether or not this, um, this paradigm is sound in general for an arbitrary PCP was open for a while. Actually, it was known that it was not sound for an arbitrary PCP. And there's a question like, you know, which PCP is it actually sound for? Um, and it turns out that the condition that is necessary is um, if a P, um, is like the, that the PCP is computational non-signaling. So I won't tell you what computational non-signaling means. Um, the only important thing for this talk is that this is like the property we need for this BMW paradigm to be sound. Um, so today we're going to get rid of this pair of um, privately verifiable clause um, and hopefully get just publicly verifiable snarks. So to do this, we're going to depart from this like privately verifiable non-interactive argument and go to and talk a little bit about a publicly verifiable interactive argument. So that is you know, the famous Killian protocol. So um, Killian's protocol works as follows. Um, the basic idea is that um, the prover is going to compute this root, which is a commitment to a PCP pi, send it over to the verifier, who then sends over, um, you know, at, um, picks a random PCP query and asks the, PC, uh, the prover to reply with the answers to those locations along with openings to the commitment to show that they were in fact the PCP answers the prover had committed to previously. Um, and so in order for there to be these local openings, um, we'll need like a hash function, a commitment scheme, which allows for local openings or this like, um, it's like to open, to like give the value of a location and have it be verifiable without having to open everything um, because our PCP pi might be very long. And this is, um, so this exists and is known as like a tree commitment scheme. And I won't focus on how that works, but just know that it's a scheme with a local opening. So our observation is that the first two rounds of the Killian protocol look a lot like an instantiation of PRR if the PCP is computed not signaling and if the hash H is a tree hashed PR scheme. Um, and so the question then is like, you know, does this tree hashed PR scheme exist? And the answer is yes, it does. Um, it's something called a somewhere statistically binding hash. So let's talk about that. Um, so a somewhere statistically binding hash is a hash function with local opening that can be binding on an index of your choice. Um, so here we're going to be binding on the index i um, to get a hash key for that's binding on i along with the trapdoor. And you have the property that is possible to um, take a hash of your of x and which is binding on the index i and invert it using the trapdoor to get the location xi. Um, and the second property we're going to want is that for any two possible locations on which you're binding, is you can't tell which of the two locations your hash function is binding on. Um, and so these are like, you know, um, these are the properties of a pure scheme in the sense that a pure scheme has privacy, which means that you can't tell which location you're binding on, um, which, which location you're asking. And that's, the, that's exactly the second property here. Um, it also has a property that you can invert any possible response to figure out what um, the other person was sending you under the hood. And that's the first property here. Um, so extractable and private. And these SSB hash functions are known to exist, assuming the hardness of OWE. So let's return again to the Killian protocol where we have used these SSB hash functions. Um, so now our um, hash keys that the prover is going to have to use to compute the commitment is a sequence of hash keys, um, one for each PCP query. Um, so it's going to be binding on each of the PCP queries that the, ver um, that, you know, the verifier chooses. Um, now to compute the um, commitment, they're going to compute each hash individually and send over all L hashes. Um, and then, you know, for the rest of the protocol, verifier is going to ask for a query. The prover is going to send back the answers along with openings um, for each of the L hash functions and each of the L um, answers. And so this is, this is instantiation of KR is sound. Um, and the point is that, you know, in these first two rounds, um, the verifier has actually asked the prover for an encrypted ans um, encrypted answers to the PCP queries at Q star. Um, and if only they could actually invert that and figure out you know, what the prover had sent, then this would be sound. So we note that if um, 
you know, this next query that the, that the verifier asks is equal to Q star, the encrypted queries, then even an all powerful ad adversary cannot find accepting answers and openings um, since they don't exist um, by assigning us a KRR. Um, so this is like the key point that we will be using throughout the talk. So this leads us to a new perspective on the Killian protocol, which is that we start with a privately verifiable instantiation of KRR. Um, and we want to ask, how do we make this protocol publicly verifiable? So Killian's answer is to add interaction. Um, for us, we are interested in constructing non-interactive arguments, so that's not gonna work. Um, here's a paper that actually achieves um, non-interactive argument um, by Kalai Panath and Yang, which uses zero testable encryption, which is an assumption on bilinear maps. Um, it's sort of an honest inner assumption, not sure, not sure how to instantiate it. So um, in our work, we propose this alternative idea, which is to add an additional snark that for all possible questions that the verifier could ask, for all, for all possible Q, which is a PCP query, um, there exists some answers and openings that the prover could send so that the verifier would accept. So in one shot, we're asking the prover to convince the verifier that you know, no matter his next message, no matter which queue he wants, um, you know, there's, there will always be an answer that the prover could give that the verifier would accept. Now the verifier doesn't even have to ask queue anymore because the prover has proved to him that you know, it would all, he would always have for any queue. Um, and we note that this is precisely a batch MP statement um, because it's for all Q, so for many possible values of Q, um, there's this MP statement, which is that there exists um, this like witness W that V accepts. Um, so this is a batch MP statement and it's for this following language LV, um, which is basically that an instance XH root and query Q is an LV if there exists this witness, so answers and openings, such that the verifier would accept it. So now let's see what our start looks like. Um, we have the prover and verifier. There's gonna, the common random string will consist of um, all L hashes, so binding on the, Q, the L locations of the PCP query, along with a CRS for the batch MP snark. Um, the prover um, computes the commitment and we'll send over the resulting commitment along with a snark that for all Q, for all question queries, um, the resulting um, statement is in the language LV. Um, so yeah, this is basically our snark. Um, we're almost done. Um, so basically the point is that um, if X is not in the language L, then by the sound is a KRR and BHK, and this is also in particular for the special Q star that was encrypted. So then, you know, so if X is not in the language, then this statement has to be false because this is false in particular for Q plus Q star. Um, and then the prover should not be generated as proof successfully. So then there are accept. So that's argue soundness. So, okay, anyway, so we're basically done now. There is one technicality, which is that um, the number of statements is very large. Um, and so in particular, um, if you consider a time t computation, the PCP pi will be size at least like um, poly t. Um, and for a not simply PCP, the size of a PCP query is polylog t, which means that the number of possible queries is t to the polylog t. So now for the prover to be able to generate this batch MP proof, they're going to have to run in time t to the polylog t, which is pretty large. Um, ideally, we would have poly t. Um, so it turns out there's a fix to this. Um, so for all non signal PCPs that we know of, um, they have the same structure, which is that there is um, that you can partition any query into a bunch of tests. So you're checking all, each test individually and taking the end of all the tests. Um, so now we can just replace this for all Q clause with a for all test clause. Um, so we're going to check every single test, um, of which there are only poly T of them. Um, and this suffices to check any possible query Q because a query Q is just the end of a bunch of tests. Um, and now the number of statements is poly T and the prover can generate this batch and P proof in time poly T. Um, so he runs time poly T and we're done. 
Um, so that wraps up our construction of a SNARC for any language that has a computation of the Okay, I want to return once again to our earlier discussion of the Killian protocol as with the first two rounds being instantiation of the KRR protocol. Um, and just recall once again that this has the property that if the third message from the verifier is Q star, then even an all powerful adversary cannot find existing, um, accepting answers and openings since none of them exist. Um, and so, and like, so since this holds for Q, Q star, um, to argue soundness, what you want to do is just say that if you said it's a random Q, um, well, you can't tell what was hashed or what was hidden um, in these like hash functions, H of Q, I star, by the soundness, by like the privacy and distinguishability of the SSB hash functions. So for a random Q, um, well, you couldn't tell what was in the hash function, so it might as well have been Q, and then it just sound. Um, so that's sort of like the, the indistinguishability that this entire security is relying on. And turn out this is precisely a straight line proof of soundness. Um, so more precisely, a straight line proof of soundness is a reduction, um, in this case is to this indistinguishability assumption, um, that runs by interacting with the cheating prover exactly once. Um, so just sends a message to the prover, receives an answer to another question, and receives an answer. Um, and does not involve any rewinding. So if you know about existing the existing proof of Killian, the standard existing proof of Killian, um, you might know that the proof involves running the first two rounds, um, putting a bookmark there, and then running the next two rounds and rewinding back to the to that bookmark many, many times. And each time you get a new answer, um, which you can then eventually use to extract the entire PCB. Uh, it's also also rewinding, and rewinding is generally known not to be sound on, um, against quantum adversaries. So now that we are only running our protocol exactly once, no rewinding, um, it turns out this is actually this reduction actually holds for quantum adversaries as well. Um, so we actually prove that, which is that any argument system that is proven sound via straight line react reduction. It's also post-quantum sound, assuming that the underlying assumption is just like post-quantum sound. Um, and as a corollary, we get that Killian with computational non-signaling PCP and a parallel SSB hash family is post-quantum sound. Um, and so this is like a pretty simple proof of um, the fact that Killian is post-quantum sound. This was done independently in a work by Chiesa, Moss, Spooner, and Zandri which shows that Killian is post-quantum sound for any PCP and SSB hash function, um, but they do this using advanced quantum techniques. So the benefit of our um, corollary is that this is understandable for people who don't have very much quantum background. Um, because all you have to do is witness a reduction that um, you know, quantum uh, holds for quantum adversaries as well. Um, so I just want to finish by generalizing this argument for a broader class of protocols um, called somewhere statistically sound. So somewhere we define so somewhere statistically sound arguments are essentially a generalization of this idea that for the Killian protocol, the third message um, there's this a third message such that the resulting protocol is statistically sound. Um, so that's actually what the first um, what the first condition says that there exists a third message such that everything else after that is statistically sound, the prover can't cheat no matter what. Um, the second condition is that um, these, the third message is basically indistinguishable from random. Um, and that held for our case as well by the security SSB hash function. You can't tell whether the Q or Q star was encrypted in the hash function. Um, but this allows you to um, argue security in general. So as we just sort of showed with the Killian protocol, um, somewhere particularly sound gives you straight line soundness, which gives you post quantum soundness. Um, and we additionally conjecture, back to scenarios again, that any SSS interactive argument is fiat shamir friendly. Um, if you don't know what fiat shamir is, um, it's a paradigm which allows you to turn any interactive argument or any interactive protocol into a non-interactive one. And you do this by replacing every verifier message with a hash of everything so far. So a hash of the, like, all the prover messages so far, for instance. 
Um, and so all the works at the beginning of this talk that I mentioned constructing snarks, um, both of them did so through the fiat Shamir paradigm um, and proving that it is sound. So fiat Shamir is known to be unsound in general for arguments, but it is known to be sound for some, like many um, proofs. And so there's a question which is like, which, which, which protocols is fiat Shamir actually sound for? Um, and so I guess what we're doing in this work is that we're conjecturing that um, the that there's that the idea of being somewhere statistically sound is enough to be fiat Shamir friendly or to, for fiat Shamir to be sound. Um, and so the idea is there exists a message for which the protocol is statistically sound, and in general, um, there's some indistinguishability so it's an argument. Um, and so I guess essentially what a statistically, somewhere statistically sound argument is is a hybrid between a full argument on which everything is, you know, just an argument and a proof on in which is something is statistically sound. So it's somewhere a proof and in general an argument. And we can measure this is the right property for an argument should be fashion mirror friendly. So, so to summarize, um, our key contribution is a new perspective on Killian's protocol as a publicly verifiable and interactive variant of KR. Um, and we have a few a um, few different branchings out of that that we, um, that we um, explore. So the first is we are able to construct a snark for any language that has a computational non-signaling PCP from a snark for a batch on P. Um, we also define this notion of somewhere statistical soundness, and we show that this implies street line soundness, which then implies close quantum soundness. And we also conjecture that any SSS interactive argument is fiat Shamir friendly. Um, so that concludes my talk. Um, thank you for listening.